The Kurdish-Turkish conflict note is an armed conflict between the Republic of Turkey and various Kurdish insurgent groups, which have demanded separation from Turkey to create an independent Kurdistan, or to have autonomy and greater political and cultural rights for Kurds inside the Republic of Turkey. The main rebel group is the Kurdistan Workers' Party or PKK Kurdish, Partiya Karkaran Kurdistan. Although insurgents have carried out attacks in many regions of Turkey, the insurgency is mainly in southeastern Turkey. The PKK's presence in Iraq's Kurdistan region, from which it has also launched attacks, has resulted in the Turkish military carrying out frequent ground incursions and air and artillery strikes in the region. The conflict has cost the economy of Turkey an estimated $300 to $450 billion, mostly military costs. It has also affected tourism in Turkey. The group was founded in 1978 in the village of Fis near Lice by a group of Kurdish students led by Abdullah Akalan. The initial reason given by the PKK for this was the oppression of Kurds in Turkey. By then, the use of Kurdish language, dress, folklore, and names were banned in Kurdish inhabited areas. In an attempt to deny their existence, the Turkish government categorized Kurds as Mountain Turks until 1991. The words Kurds, Kurdistan, or Kurdish were officially banned by the Turkish government. Following the military coup of 1980, the Kurdish language was officially prohibited in public and private life. Many who spoke, published, or sang in Kurdish were arrested and imprisoned. The PKK was then formed, as part of a growing discontent over the suppression of Turkey's ethnic Kurds, in an effort to establish linguistic, cultural, and political rights for Turkey's ethnic Kurdish minority. The full scale insurgency, however, did not begin until 15 August 1984, when the PKK announced a Kurdish uprising. Since the conflict began, more than 40,000 have died, most of whom were Kurdish civilians. The European Court of Human Rights has condemned Turkey for thousands of human rights abuses. Many judgments are related to systematic executions of Kurdish civilians, torturing, forced displacements, destroyed villages, arbitrary arrests, murdered and disappeared Kurdish journalists, activists and politicians. The first insurgency lasted until the 1st of September 1999 when the PKK declared a unilateral ceasefire. The armed conflict was later resumed on 1 June 2004, when the PKK declared an end to its ceasefire. Since summer 2011, the conflict has become increasingly violent with resumption of large-scale hostilities. In 2013 the Turkish government and the jailed PKK leader Abdullah Akalan started talks. On 21 March 2013, Akalan announced the end of armed struggle and a ceasefire with peace talks. On July 25, 2015, the PKK finally cancelled their 2013 ceasefire after a year of tension due to various events, including the Turks bombing PKK positions in Iraq, in the midst of the Kurds' battle against the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. With the resumption of violence, hundreds of ethnic Kurdish civilians have been killed and numerous human rights violations have occurred including torture, rape and widespread destruction of property. Turkish authorities have destroyed substantial parts of many Kurdish inhabited cities including Diyarbakir, Cernik, Mardin, Sizer, Nusaybin, and Yuksekova. Following mainly secret negotiations, a largely successful ceasefire was put in place by AKP and PKK. The ceasefire broke in summer 2015 due to political tensions. Topic. Background Kurdish rebellions against the Ottoman Empire go back two centuries, but the modern conflict dates back to the Turkish War of Independence, which established a Turkish nationalist state which has consistently repressed the human rights of Kurdish people in Turkey. Major historical events include the Kokgiri Rebellion 1920, Sheikh Said Rebellion 1925, Ararat Rebellion 1930, and the Dersim Rebellion 1938. The Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK was founded in 1974 by Abdullah Akalan. Initially a Marxist-Leninist organization, it abandoned Orthodox communism and adopted a program of greater political rights and cultural autonomy for Kurds. Between 1978 and 1980, the PKK engaged in limited urban warfare with the Turkish state to these aims. The organization restructured itself and moved the organization structure to Syria between 1980 and 1984, just after the 1980 Turkish coup d'état. The rural-based insurgency lasted between 1984 and 1992. 
The PKK shifted its activities to include urban warfare between 1993 and 1995 and between 1996 and 1999. The leader of the party was captured in Kenya in early 1999, with the support of CIA. After a unilaterally declared peace initiative in 1999, the PKK resumed the conflict due to a Turkish military offensive in 2004. Since 1974 it had been able to evolve, adapt, and go through a metamorphosis, which became the main factor in its survival. It had gradually grown from a handful of political students to a dynamic organization. In the aftermath of the failed 1991 uprisings in Iraq against Saddam Hussein, the UN established no-fly zones over Kurdish areas of Iraq, giving those areas de facto independence. The PKK was forced to retreat from Lebanon and Syria as a part of an agreement between Turkey and the United States. The PKK moved their training camps to the Kandil Mountains and as a result Turkey responded with Operation Steel 1995 and Operation Hammer 1997 in a failed attempt to crush the PKK. In 1992 Colonel Kemal Yilmaz declared that the Special Warfare Department the seat of the counter-guerrilla was still active in the conflict against the PKK. The U.S. State Department echoed concerns of counter-guerrilla involvement in its 1994 country report on human rights practices for Turkey. The counter-guerrilla units were involved in serious human rights violations. Akalan was captured in Kenya on 15 February 1999, allegedly involving CIA agents with Greek embassy cooperation, resulting in his transfer to the Turkish authorities. After a trial he was sentenced to death, but this sentence was commuted to lifelong aggravated imprisonment when the death penalty was abolished in Turkey in August 2002. With the invasion of Iraq in 2003, much of the arms of the Iraqi army fell into the hands of the Iraqi Kurdish Peshmerga militias. The Peshmerga became the de facto army of Iraqi Kurdistan and Turkish sources claim many of its weapons found their way into the hands of other Kurdish groups such as the PKK and the PJAK a PKK offshoot which operates in Iranian Kurdistan. This has been the pretext for numerous Turkish attacks on the Kurdistan region of Iraq. In June 2007, Turkey estimated there to be over 3,000 PKK fighters in Iraqi Kurdistan. History Topic. Beginnings In 1973 a small group under Akalan's leadership released a declaration on Kurdish identity in Turkey. The group, which called itself the Revolutionaries of Kurdistan also included Ali Haydar Kaytan, Jamil Bayek, Haki Karar and Kemal Pir. The group decided in 1974 to start a campaign for Kurdish rights. Jamil Bayek was sent to Urfa, Kemal Pir to Muse, Haki Karar to Batman, and Ali Haydar Kaytan to Tuncheli. They then started student organizations which talked to local workers and farmers about Kurdish rights. In 1977, an assembly was held to evaluate the political activities. The assembly included 100 people, from different backgrounds and several representatives from other leftist organizations. In spring 1977, Abdullah Akalan traveled to Mount Ararat, Erzurum, Tuncheli, Elizig, Antep, and other cities to make the public aware of the Kurdish issue. This was followed by a Turkish government crackdown against the organization. On 18 March 1977, Haki Karar was assassinated in Antep. During this period, the group was also targeted by the Turkish ultranationalist organization, the Nationalist Movement Party's Grey Wolves. Some wealthy Kurdish landowners targeted the group as well, killing Halil Kavgun on 18 May 1978, which resulted in large Kurdish meetings in Erzurum, Dersim, Elizig, and Antep. The founding Congress of the PKK was held on 27 November 1978 in Fis, a village near the city of Lys. During this Congress the 25 people present decided to found the Kurdistan Workers' Party. The Turkish state, Turkish rightist groups, and some Kurdish landowners continued their attacks on the group. In response, the PKK employed armed members to protect itself, which got involved in the fighting between leftist and rightist groups in Turkey 1978 at the side of the leftists, during which the right-wing Grey Wolves militia killed 109 and injured 176 Alevi Kurds in the town of Karamanmaras on 25 December 1978 in what would become known as the Maras Massacre. In summer 1979, Akalan traveled to Syria and Lebanon where he made contacts with Syrian and Palestinian leaders. 
After the Turkish coup d'état on 12 September 1980 and a crackdown which was launched on all political organizations, during which at least 191 people were killed and half a million were imprisoned, note most of the PKK withdrew into Syria and Lebanon. Akhalan himself went to Syria in September 1980 with Kemal Pir, Masum Korkmaz, and Dalil Doan being sent to set up an organization in Lebanon. Some PKK fighters allegedly took part in the 1982 Lebanon War on the Syrian side. The Second PKK Party Congress was then held in Dara, Syria, from 20 to the 25th of August 1982. Here it was decided that the organization would return to Turkey to start an armed guerrilla war there for the creation of an independent Kurdish state. Meanwhile, they prepared guerrilla forces in Syria and Lebanon to go to war. Many PKK leaders however were arrested in Turkey and sent to Diyarbakir prison. The prison became the site of much political protest. See also torture in Turkey hashtag deaths in custody. In Diyarbakir prison, PKK member Maslam Doan burned himself to death on 21 March 1982 in protest at the treatment in prison. Ferhat Kurte, Nekmi Onan, Mahmut Zenjin and Eshref Anyak followed his example on 17 May 1982. On 14 July 1982, PKK members Kamal Pir, M. Hayrai Durmush, Ali Sisak and Akif Yilmaz started a hunger strike in Diyarbakir prison. Kamal Pir died on 7 September 1982, M. Hayrai Durmush on 12 September 1982, Akif Yilmaz on 15 September 1982, and Ali Sisak on 17 September 1982. On 13 April 1984, a 75-day hunger strike started in Istanbul. As a result, four prisoners—Abdullah Merrill, Haydar Basbag, Fatih Okudelmas, and Hassan Telsi—died. First insurgency 1984–93 The PKK launched its armed insurgency on 15 August 1984 with armed attacks on Era and Semdinli. During these attacks one gendarmerie soldier was killed, seven soldiers, two policemen and three civilians were injured. It was followed by a PKK raid on a police station in Syart, two days later. In the early 1990s, President Turgut Özal agreed to negotiations with the PKK, the events of the 1991 Gulf War having changed some of the geopolitical dynamics in the region. Apart from Özal, himself half Kurdish, few Turkish politicians were interested in a peace process, nor was more than a part of the PKK itself. In 1993 Ozil was working on the peace plans with the former finance minister Adnan Kavesi and the general commander of the Turkish gendarmerie, Eshref Bitlis. Negotiations led to a ceasefire declaration by the PKK on 20 March 1993. With the PKK's ceasefire declaration in hand, Ozil was planning to propose a major pro-Kurdish reform package at the next meeting of the National Security Council. The president's death on 17 April led to the postponement of that meeting, and the plans were never presented. A month later a PKK ambush on 24 May 1993 ensured the end of the peace process. The former PKK commander Semdin Sakik maintains the attack was part of the Dogu Kalisma Grubu's coup plans. Under the new presidency of Suleiman Demirel and premiership of Tansu Siller, the Castle Plan to use any and all means to solve the Kurdish question using violence, which Ozil had opposed, was enacted, and the peace process abandoned. Some journalists and politicians maintain that Ozil's death allegedly by poison along with the assassination of a number of political and military figures supporting his peace efforts, was part of a covert military coup in 1993 aimed at stopping the peace plans. 1993–1999 To counter the growing force of the PKK the Turkish military started new counter-insurgency strategies between 1992 and 1995. To deprive the rebels of a logistical base of operations and allegedly punishing local people supporting the PKK the military carried out deforestation of the countryside and destroyed over 3,000 Kurdish villages, causing at least 2 million refugees. Most of these villages were evacuated, but other villages were burned, bombed, or shelled by government forces, and several entire villages were obliterated from the air. 
While some villages were destroyed or evacuated, many villages were brought to the side of the Turkish government, which offered salaries to local farmers and shepherds to join the village guards, which would prevent the PKK from operating in these villages, while villages which refused were evacuated by the military. These tactics managed to drive the rebels from the cities and villages into the mountains, although they still often launched reprisals on pro government villages, which included attacks on civilians. However, the turning point in the conflict came in 1998, when, after political pressure and military threats from Turkey, the PKK's leader, Abdullah Akalan, was forced to leave Syria, where he had been in exile since September 1980. He first went to Russia, then to Italy and Greece. He was eventually brought to the Greek embassy in Nairobi, Kenya, where he was arrested on 15 February 1999 at the airport in a joint MIT-CIA operation and brought to Turkey, which resulted in major protests by Kurds worldwide. Three Kurdish protesters were shot dead when trying to enter the Israeli consulate in Berlin to protest alleged Israeli involvement in the capture of Abdullah Akhalan. Although the capture of Akhalan ended a third ceasefire which Akhalan had declared on 1 August 1998, on 1 September 1999 the PKK declared a unilateral ceasefire which would last until 2004. <laughs> unilateral ceasefire After the unilateral ceasefire the PKK declared in September 1999, their forces fully withdrew from the Republic of Turkey and set up new bases in the Kandil Mountains of Iraq and in February 2000 they declared the formal end of the war. After this, the PKK said it would switch its strategy to using peaceful methods to achieve their objectives. In April 2002 the PKK changed its name to Kadak Kurdistan Freedom and Democracy Congress, claiming the PKK had fulfilled its mission and would now move on as purely political organization. In October 2003 the Kadak announced its dissolution and declared the creation of a new organization, KONGRA GEL Kurdistan People's Congress. .Offers by the PKK for negotiations were ignored by the Turkish government, which claimed, the KONGRA GEL continued to carry out armed attacks in the 1999–2004 period, although not on the same scale as before September 1999. They also blame the KONGRA GEL for Kurdish riots which happened during the period. The PKK argues that they only defended themselves as they claim the Turkish military launched some 700 raids against their base's militants, including in northern Iraq. Also, despite the KONGRA gel ceasefire, other groups continued their armed activities. The PISC, for instance, tried to use the ceasefire to attract PKK fighters to join their organization. The Kurdistan Freedom Hawks talk were formed during this period by radical KONGRA gel commanders, dissatisfied with the ceasefire. The period after the capture of Akhalan was used by the Turkish government to launch major crackdown operations against the Turkish Hezbollah, Kurdish Hezbollah arresting 3,300 Hezbollah members in 2000, compared to 130 in 1998, and killing the group's leader Hussein Veliolu on 13 January 2000. During this phase of the war at least 145 people were killed during fighting between the PKK and security forces. After AK party came to power in 2002, the Turkish state started to ease restrictions on the Kurdish language and culture. From 2003 to 2004 there was a power struggle inside the KONGRA gel between a reformist wing which wanted the organization to disarm completely and a traditionalist wing which wanted the organization to resume its armed insurgency once again. The conservative wing of the organization won this power struggle forcing reformist leaders such as Kani Yilmaz, Nizamettin Ta's and Abdullah Akhalan's younger brother Osman Akhalan to leave the organization. The three major traditionalist leaders, Murat Karayilan, Jamil Bayek and Fayman Hussein formed the new leadership committee of the organization. The new administration decided to restart the insurgency, because they claimed that without guerrillas the PKK's political activities would remain unsuccessful. This came as the pro-Kurdish People's Democracy Party HADEP was banned by the Turkish Supreme Court on the 13th of March 2003 and its leader Murat Bolzak was imprisoned in April 2005 KONGRA gel reverted its name back to PKK because not all of the KONGRA GEL's elements reverted the organization has also been referred to as the new PKK the KONGRA GEL has since become the Legislative Assembly of the Koma Savakan Kurdistan, an umbrella organization which includes the PKK and is used as the group's urban and political wing. 
Ex-DEP member Zubir Idar is the president of the KONGRA GEL, through the ceasefire years 2000, 2001, 2002 and 2003, some 711 people were killed according to the Turkish government. The Uppsala conflict data program put casualties during these years at 368 to 467 killed. Topic: <laughs> Second insurgency. On 1 June 2004, the PKK resumed its armed activities because they claimed Turkish government was ignoring their calls for negotiations and was still attacking their forces. The government claimed that in that same month some 2,000 Kurdish guerrillas entered Turkey via Iraqi Kurdistan. The PKK, lacking a state sponsor or the kind of manpower they had in the 90s, was however forced to take up new tactics. As a result, the PKK reduced the size of its field units from 15 to 20 militants to 6 to 8 militants. It also avoided direct confrontations and relied more on the use of mines, snipers and small ambushes, using hit-and-run tactics. Another change in PKK tactics was that the organization no longer attempted to control any territory, not even after dark. Nonetheless, violence increased throughout both 2004 and 2005 during which the PKK was said to be responsible for dozens of bombings in western Turkey throughout 2005. Most notably the 2005 Kusadasi minibus bombing, which killed five and injured 14 people, although the PKK denied responsibility. In March 2006 heavy fighting broke out around Diyarbakir between the PKK and Turkish security forces, as well as large riots by PKK supporters, as a result the army had to temporarily close the roads to Diyarbakir airport and many schools and businesses had to be shut down. In August, the Kurdistan Freedom Hawks talk, which vowed to Turn Turkey into hell, launched a major bombing campaign. On 25 August, two coordinated low level blasts targeted a bank in Adana. On 27 August, a school in Istanbul was targeted by a bombing. On 28 August, there were three coordinated attacks in Marmaris and one in Antalya targeting the tourist industry, and on 30 August, there was a talk bombing in Mersin. These bombings were condemned by the PKK, which declared its fifth ceasefire on 1 October 2006, which slowed down the intensity of the conflict. Minor clashes, however, continued in the southeast due to Turkish counter-insurgency operations. In total, the conflict claimed over 500 lives in 2006. 2006 also saw the PKK assassinate one of their former commanders, Kani Yilmaz, in February. In Iraq, in May 2007, there was a bombing in Ankara that killed six and injured 121 people. The Turkish government alleged the PKK was responsible for the bombing. On 4 June, a PKK suicide bombing in Tuncelli killed seven soldiers and wounded six at a military base. Tensions across the Iraqi border also started playing up as Turkish forces entered Iraq several times in pursuit of PKK fighting and in June, as four soldiers were killed by landmines, large areas of Iraqi Kurdistan were shelled which damaged nine villages and forced residents to flee. On 7 October 2007, 40-50 PKK fighters ambushed an 18-man Turkish commando unit in the Gaber Mountains, killing 15 commandos and injuring three, which made it the deadliest PKK attack since the 1990s. In response a law was passed allowing the Turkish military to take action inside Iraqi territory. Then on 21 October 2007, 150 to 200 militants attacked an outpost, in Daglika, Yuksekova, manned by a 50-strong infantry battalion. The outpost was overrun and the PKK killed 12, wounded 17 and captured 8 Turkish soldiers. They then withdrew into Iraqi Kurdistan, taking the 8 captive soldiers with them. The Turkish military claimed to have killed 32 PKK fighters in hot pursuit operations. After the attack, however, this was denied by the PKK and no corpses of PKK militants were produced by the Turkish military. The Turkish military responded by bombing PKK bases on 24 October and started preparing for a major cross border military operation. This major cross border offensive, dubbed Operation Sun, started on 21 February 2008 and was preceded by an aerial offensive against PKK camps in northern Iraq, which began on 16 December 2007. Between 3,000 and 10,000 Turkish forces took part in the offensive. According to the Turkish military around 230 PKK fighters were killed in the ground offensive, while 27 Turkish forces were killed. 
According to the PKK, over 125 Turkish forces were killed, while PKK casualties were in the tens. Smaller scale Turkish operations against PKK bases in Iraqi Kurdistan continued afterwards. On 27 July 2008, Turkey blamed the PKK for an Istanbul double bombing which killed 17 and injured 154 people. The PKK however denied any involvement. On 4 October, the most violent clashes since the October 2007 clashes in Hikari erupted as the PKK attacked the Akhtutan border post in Semdinli in the Hikari province, at night. Fifteen Turkish soldiers were killed and 20 were injured, meanwhile 23 PKK fighters were said to be killed during the fighting. On 10 November, the Iranian Kurdish insurgent group PJAK declared it would be halting operations inside Iran to start fighting the Turkish military. Turkey counts cost of conflict as Kurdish militant battle rages own at the start of 2009 Turkey opened its first Kurdish language TV channel TRT6 and on the 19th of March 2009 local elections were held in Turkey in which the pro Kurdish Democratic Society Party DTP won majority of the vote in the southeast Soon after, on 13 April 2009, the PKK declared its sixth ceasefire, after Abdullah Akalan called on them to end military operations and prepare for peace. In September Turkey's Erdogan government launched the Kurdish Initiative, which included plans to rename Kurdish villages that had been given Turkish names, expand the scope of the freedom of expression, restore Turkish citizenship to Kurdish refugees, strengthen local governments, and extend a partial amnesty for PK fighters. The plans for the Kurdish initiative were however heavily hurt after the DTP was banned by the Turkish Constitutional Court on of December 2009 and its leaders were subsequently put on trial for terrorism. A total of 1,400 DTP members were arrested and 900 detained in the government crackdown against the party. This caused major riots by Kurds all over Turkey and resulted in violent clashes between pro-Kurdish and security forces as well as pro-Turkish demonstrators, which resulted in several injuries and fatalities. On 7 December the PKK launched an ambush in Residi which killed seven and injured three Turkish soldiers, which became the deadliest PKK attack in that region since the 1990s. On 1 May 2010 the PKK declared an end to its ceasefire, launching an attack in Tuncelli that killed four and injured seven soldiers. On 31 May, Abdullah Akalan declared an end to his attempts at re-approachment and establishing dialogue with the Turkish government, leaving PKK top commanders in charge of the conflict. The PKK then stepped up its armed activities, starting with a missile attack on a navy base in Iskenderun, killing seven and wounding six soldiers. On 18 and 19 June, heavy fighting broke out that resulted in the death of 12 PKK fighters, 12 Turkish soldiers and injury of 17 Turkish soldiers, as the PKK launched three separate attacks in Hikari and Elazığ provinces. Another major attack in Hikari occurred on 20 July 2010, killing six and wounding 17 Turkish soldiers, with one PKK fighter being killed. The next day, Murat Karayilan, the leader of the PKK, announced that the PKK would lay down its arms if the Kurdish issue would be resolved through dialogue and threatened to declare independence if this demand was not met. Turkish authorities claimed they had killed 187 and captured 160 PKK fighters by 14 July. By 27 July, Turkish news sources reported the deaths of over 100 security forces, which exceeded the entire 2009 toll. On 12 August, however, a Ramadan ceasefire was declared by the PKK. In November the ceasefire was extended until the Turkish general election on 12 June 2011, despite alleging that Turkey had launched over 80 military operations against them during this period. Despite the truce, the PKK responded to these military operations by launching retaliatory attacks in Syrt and Hikari provinces, killing 12 Turkish soldiers. The ceasefire was, however, revoked early, on 28 February 2011. Soon afterwards, three PKK fighters were killed while trying to get into Turkey through northern Iraq. In May, counter insurgency operations left 12 PKK fighters and five soldiers dead. This then resulted in major Kurdish protests across Turkey as part of a civil disobedience campaign launched by the pro-Kurdish Peace and Democracy Party BDP. .During these protests two people were killed, 308 injured and 2,506 arrested by Turkish authorities. 
The 12th of June elections saw a historical performance for the pro-Kurdish Peace and Democracy Party (BDP), which won 36 seats in the southeast, which was more than the ruling Justice and Development Party (AKP), which won only 30 seats in Kurdish areas. However, 6 of the 36 elected BDP deputies remain in Turkish jails as of June 2011. One of the six jailed deputies, Hatip Dikil, was then stripped of his elected position by the Constitutional Court, after which the 30 free MPs declared a boycott of Turkish parliament. The PKK intensified its campaign again, in July killing 20 Turkish soldiers in two weeks, during which at least 10 PKK fighters were killed. On 17 August 2011, the Turkish armed forces launched multiple raids against Kurdish rebels, striking 132 targets. Turkish military bombed PKK targets in northern Iraq in six days of air raids, according to general staff, where 90–100 PKK soldiers were killed, and at least 80 injured. From July to September Iran carried out an offensive against the PJAK in northern Iraq, which resulted in a ceasefire on 29 September. After the ceasefire the PJAK withdrew its forces from Iran and joined with the PKK to fight Turkey. Turkish counter-terrorism operations reported a sharp increase of Iranian citizens among the insurgents killed in October and November, such as the six PJAK fighters killed in Kukurka on 28 October. On 19 October, 26 Turkish soldiers were killed and 18 injured in eight simultaneous PKK attacks in Kukurka and Yuksekova, in Hikari Provian 10,000 and 15,000 full-time, which is the highest it has ever been. In summer 2012, the conflict with the PKK took a violent curve, in parallel with the Syrian civil war as President Bashar al-Assad ceded control of several Kurdish cities in Syria to the PYD, the Syrian affiliate of the PKK, and Turkey armed ISIS and other Islamic groups against Kurds. Turkish Foreign Minister Ahmet Davutoglu accused the Assad government of arming the group. In June and August there were heavy clashes in Hikari province, described as the most violent in years, as the PKK attempted to seize control of Semdinli and engage the Turkish army in a frontal battle by blocking the roads leading to the town from Iran and Iraq and setting up DSHK heavy machine guns and rocket launchers on high ground to ambush Turkish motorized units that would be sent to retake the town. However the Turkish army avoided the trap by destroying the heavy weapons from the air and using long-range artillery to root out the PKK. The Turkish military declared operation was ended successfully on of August, claiming to have killed 115 guerrillas and lost only six soldiers and two village guards. On 20 August, eight people were killed and 66 wounded by a deadly bombing in Gaziantep. According to the KCK 400 incidents of shelling, air bombardment and armed clashes occurred in August. On 24 September, Turkish General Nekdet Özel claimed that 110 Turkish soldiers and 475 PKK militants had been killed since the start of 2012. Topic. Solution process. On the eve of the 2012 year, the 28th of December, in a television interview upon a question of whether the government had a project to solve the issue, Erdogan said that the government was conducting negotiations with jailed rebel leader Akalan. Negotiations initially named as Solution Process Kazım Sarayci, in public. While negotiations were going on, there were numerous events that were regarded as sabotage to derail the talks, assassination of three Kurdish PKK administrators in Paris one of them is Sakin Kansas, revealing Akhalan's talks with Kurdish party to public via the Milliyet newspaper and finally, the bombings of the Justice Ministry of Turkey and Erdogan's office at the AK Party headquarters in Ankara. However, both parties vehemently condemned all three events as they occurred and stated that they were determined anyway. Finally on 21 March 2013, after months of negotiations with the Turkish government, Abdullah Akalan's letter to people was read both in Turkish and Kurdish during Nowruz celebrations in Diyarbakir. The letter called a ceasefire that included disarmament and withdrawal from Turkish soil and calling an end to armed struggle. PKK announced that they would obey, stating that the year of 2013 is the year of solution either through war or through peace. Erdogan welcomed the letter stating that concrete steps will follow PKK's withdrawal. On 25 April 2013, PKK announced that it would be withdrawing all its forces within Turkey to northern Iraq. According to the Turkish government and the Kurds and most of the press, this move marks the end of 30-year-old conflict. 
Second phase which includes constitutional and legal changes towards the recognition of human rights of the Kurds starts simultaneously with withdrawal. Escalation On 6 and 7 October 2014, riots erupted in various cities in Turkey for protesting the siege of Kobane. The Kurds accused the Turkish government of supporting ISIS and not letting people send support for Kobane Kurds. Protesters were met with tear gas and water cannons. 37 people were killed in protests. During these protests, there were deadly clashes between PKK and Hezbollah sympathizers. Three soldiers were killed by PKK in January 2015, as a sign of rising tensions in the country. 2015 present In June 2015, the main Syrian Kurdish militia, YPG, and the Turkey's main pro-Kurdish party, HDP, accused Turkey of allowing Islamic State ISIL soldiers to cross its border and attack the Kurdish city of Kobani in Syria. The conflict between Turkey and PKK escalated following the 2015 Saruç bombing attack on progressive activists, which was blamed on a Turkish ISIL-affiliated group. During the Operation Martyr Yalsin, Turkey bombed alleged PKK bases in Iraq and PYD bases in Syria's Kurdish region Rojava, effectively ending the ceasefire after many months of increasing tensions and the killing of two policemen in the town of Salenpinar, which the PKK denied carrying out. Turkish warplanes also bombed YPG bases in Syria. Violence soon spread throughout Turkey. Many Kurdish businesses were destroyed by mobs. The headquarters and branches of the pro-Kurdish People's Democratic Party HDP were also attacked. There are reports of civilians being killed in several Kurdish populated towns and villages. The Council of Europe raised their concerns over the attacks on civilians and the blockade of Sizer. The number of casualties since July 23 was claimed by Turkish government to be 150 Turkish officers and over 2,000 Kurdish rebels killed by September. In December 2015, Turkish military operations in the Kurdish regions of southeastern Turkey had killed hundreds of civilians, displaced hundreds of thousands and caused massive destruction in residential areas. According to the Human Rights Watch HRW report, "...local human rights groups have recorded well over 100 civilian deaths and multiple injuries." The spring of 2016 saw the seasonal uptick in combat activity. In May, a Turkish Bell A-1 Supercobra helicopter was documented shot down by a PKK-fired Russian-made manpads. In January 2018, the Turkish military and its Free Syrian Army and Sham Legion allies began a cross-border operation in the Kurdish-majority Afrin Canton in northern Syria, against the Kurdish-led Democratic Union Party in Syria (PYD) and the U.S.-supported YPG Kurdish militia. In March 2018, Turkey launched military operations to eliminate the Kurdish PKK fighters in northern Iraq. Sir Hilden The Sir Hilden, or People's Uprising, started on 14 March 1990, Nusaybin during the funeral of 20-year-old PKK fighter Kamuran Dundar, who along with 13 other fighters was killed by the Turkish military after crossing into Turkey via Syria several days earlier. Dundar came from a Kurdish nationalist family which claimed his body and held a funeral for him in Nusaybin in which he was brought to the city's main mosque and 5,000 people which held a march. On the way back the march turned violent and protesters clashed with the police, during which both sides fired upon each other and many people were injured. A curfew was then placed in Nusaybin, tanks and special forces were brought in and some 700 people were arrested. Riots spread to nearby towns and in Sizer over 15,000 people, constituting about half the town's population took part in riots in which five people were killed, 80 injured and 155 arrested. Widespread riots took place throughout the southeast on Nowruz, the Kurdish New Year celebrations, which at the time were banned. Protests slowed down over the next two weeks as many started to stay home and Turkish forces were ordered not to intervene unless absolutely necessarily but factory sit-ins, go slows, work boycotts and unauthorized. Strikes were still held although in protest of the state, protests are often held on 21 March, or Nowruz. 
most notably in 1992, when thousands of protesters clashed with security forces all over the country and where the army allegedly disobeyed an order from President Suleiman Demirel not to attack the protest. In the heavy violence that ensued during that year's Nowruz protest some 55 people were killed, mainly in Cernik 26 killed, Sirs 29 killed, and Nusaybin 14 killed, and it included a police officer and a soldier. Over 200 people were injured and another 200 were arrested. According to Governor of Cernik, Mustafa Malay, the violence was caused by 500 to 1,500 armed rebels which he alleged, entered the town during the festival. However, he conceded that the security forces did not establish their targets properly and caused great damage to civilian houses." Since Abdullah Akhalin's capture on 15 February 1998, protests are also held every year on that date. <inaudible> <inaudible> Kurdish political movement On 7 June 1990, seven members of the Grand National Assembly of Turkey who were expelled from the Social Democratic People's Party SHP, together formed the People's Labour Party HEP and were led by Ahmet Fahmi Isakler. The party was banned in July 1993 by the Constitutional Court of Turkey for promoting separatism. The party was succeeded by the Democracy Party, which was founded in May 1993. The Democracy Party, was however banned on 16 June 1994 for promoting Kurdish nationalism and four of the party's members, Leyla Zana, Hatip Dikil, Orhan Doğan and Selim Sadik were sentenced to 14 years in prison. Zana was the first Kurdish woman to be elected into parliament. However, she sparked a major controversy by saying, I take this oath for the brotherhood between the Turkish people and the Kurdish people, during her inauguration into parliament. In June 2004, after spending 10 years in jail, a Turkish court ordered the release of all four prisoners in May 1994. Kurdish lawyer Murat Bozlik formed the People's Democracy Party, HADEP, which won 1,171,623 votes, or 4.17% of the national vote during the general elections on 24 December 1995 and 1,482,196 votes, or 4.75% percent in the elections on 18 April 1999, however it failed to win any seats due to the 10% threshold. During local elections in 1999 they won control over 37 municipalities and gained representation in 47 cities and hundreds of districts. In 2002 the party became a member of Socialist International. After surviving a closure case in 1999, HADEP was finally banned on 13 March 2003 on the grounds that it had become a center of illegal activities which included aiding and abetting the PKK. The European Court of Human Rights ruled in 2010 that the ban violated Article 11 of the European Convention on Human Rights which guarantees freedom of association. The Democratic People's Party was formed on 24 October 1997 and succeeded HADEP. DEHAP won 1,955,298 votes or 6,23% during the November 3, 2002 general election. However, it performed disappointingly during the March 28, 2004 local elections, where their coalition with the SHP and the Freedom and Solidarity Party only managed to win 5.1% of the vote, only winning in Batman, Hakkari, Diyarbakir and Cernik provinces, the majority of Kurdish voters voting for the AKP. After being released in 2004 Leila Zana formed the Democratic Society Movement DTH, which merged with the DEHAP into the Democratic Society Party DTP in 2005 under the leadership of Amit Turk. The Democratic Society Party decided to run their candidates as independent candidates during the June 22, 2007 general elections, to get around the 10% threshold rule. Independents won 1,822,253 votes or 5.2% during the elections, resulting in a total of 27 seats, 23 of which went to the DTP. The party performed well during the March 29, 2009 local elections, however, winning 2,116,684 votes or 5.41% and doubling the number of governors from 4 to 8 and increasing the number of mayors from 32 to 51. 
For the first time they won a majority in the southeast and, aside from the Batman, Hikari, Diyarbakir and Cernik provinces which DEHAP had won in 2004, the DTP managed to win Van, Syrt and Igder provinces from the AKP. On the 11th of December 2009, the Constitutional Court of Turkey voted to ban the DTP, ruling that the party had links to the PKK just like in case of previous closed Kurdish parties and authorities claimed that it is seen as guilty of spreading terrorist propaganda. Chairman Ahmet Turk and legislator Aysel Tugluk were expelled from parliament, and they and 35 other party members were banned from joining any political party for five years. The European Union released a statement, expressing concern over the court's ruling and urging Turkey to change its policies towards political parties. Major protests erupted throughout Kurdish communities in Turkey, in response to the ban. The DTP was succeeded by the Peace and Democracy Party BDP, under the leadership of Selahattin Demeritas. The BDP called on its supporters to boycott the Turkish constitutional referendum on 12 September 2010 because the constitutional change did not meet minority demands. Gulten Kisanik, the BDP co-chair, released a statement saying that, We will not vote against the amendment and prolong the life of the current fascist constitution. Nor will we vote in favor of the amendments and support a new fascist constitution. Due to the boycott Hikari 9.05%, Cernik 22.5%, Diyarbakir 34.8%, Batman 40.62%, Mardin 43.0%, Van 43.61, Syrt 50.88%, Igder 51.09%, Muse 54.09%, Agri 56.42%, Tunceli 67.22%, Sanlierfa 68.43% percent cars 68.55% and Bitlis province 70.01% had the lowest turnouts in the country compared to a 73.71% national average Tunceli however was the only Kurdish majority province where a majority of the population voted no during the referendum during the June 12, 2011 national elections the BDP nominated 61 independent candidates, winning 2,819,917 votes or 6.57% and increasing its number of seats from 20 to 36. The BDP won the most support in Cernik 72.87%, Hikari 70.87%, Diyarbakir 62.08% and Mardin 62.08% provinces. Topic. Casualties According to figures released by the Anadolu Agency, citing a Turkish security source, from 1984 to August 2015, there were 36,345 deaths in the conflict. This included 6,741 civilians, 7,230 security forces, 5,347 soldiers, 1,466 village guards and 283 policemen and 22,374 PKK fighters by August 2015. Among the civilian casualties, till 2012, were 157 teachers. From August 1984 to June 2007, a total of 13,327 soldiers and 7,620 civilians were said to have been wounded. About 2,500 people were said to have been killed between 1984 and 1991, while over 17,500 were killed between 1991 and 1995. The number of murders committed by village guards from 1985 to 1996 is put at 296 by official estimates. Contrary to the newest estimate, earlier figures by the Turkish military put the number of PKK casualties much higher, with 26,128 PKK dead by June 2007, and 29,704 by March 2009. Between the start of the second insurgency in 2004, and March 2009, 2,462 PKK militants were claimed killed. However, later figures provided by the military for the 1984-2012 period, revised down the number of killed PKK members to 21,800. Both the PKK and Turkish military have accused each other of civilian deaths. Since the 1970s, the European Court of Human Rights has condemned Turkey for the thousands of human rights abuses against Kurdish people. 
The judgments are related to systematic executions of Kurdish civilians, torturing, forced displacements, thousands of destroyed villages, arbitrary arrests, murdered and disappeared Kurdish journalists, politicians and activists. Turkey has been also condemned for killing Kurdish civilians and blaming the PKK in the ECHR Kuskaner massacre. According to human rights organizations, since the beginning of the uprising, 4,000 villages have been destroyed, in which between 380,000 and 1 million Kurdish villagers have been forcibly evacuated from their homes, mainly by the Turkish military. Some 5,000 Turks and 35,000 Kurds, have been killed, 17,000 Kurds have disappeared and 119,000 Kurds have been imprisoned by Turkish authorities. According to the Humanitarian Law Project, 2,400 Kurdish villages were destroyed and 18,000 Kurds were executed, by the Turkish government. In total up to 3 million people mainly Kurds have been displaced by the conflict, an estimated 1 million of which are still internally displaced as of 2009. The Assyrian minority was heavily affected as well, as now most 50 to 60, 000, 000 of its population is in refuge in Europe. Sibahat Tunsil, an elected MP from the BDP, put the PKK's casualties at 18,000 as of July 2011. Topic before 2012 ceasefire The Uppsala Conflict Data Program recorded 25,825 to 30,639 casualties to date, 22,729 to 25,984 of which having died during the first insurgency, 368 to 467 during the ceasefire and 2,728 to 4,188 during the second insurgency. Casualties from 1989 to 2011, according to the UCDP are as following, the conflict's casualties between 1984 and March 2009 according to the General Staff of the Republic of Turkey, Turkish Gendarmerie, General Directorate of Security and since then until June 2010 according to Milliot's analysis of the data of the General Staff of the Republic of Turkey and Turkish Gendarmerie were as following, topic since 2013, from ceasefire to new confrontations the Belgium-based crisis group keeps track of casualties linked to the Turkey PKK conflict. This data is limited to proper Turkey, and does not include casualties from preemptive operations in Syria or Iraq. Asterisk, mainly due to the 6-8 October 2014 Kurdish riots where 42 civilians were killed by state forces during anti-government protests by Kurdish groups throughout Turkey. The protesters denouncing Ankara position during Islamic State's siege of Kobani. This is the main incident out of the ceasefire period. Asterisk asterisk, as of July 2018. The ceasefire agreement broke down in July 2015, dividing 2015 in two sharply different periods. Topic external operations Turkey has lead strikes and several ground operations in Syria and Iraq, in order to attack PKK-related groups. Asterisk, most of Turkey's Operation Euphrates Shield combats were between TISK and TFSA against us on one side, and between YPG against us on the other, while the Turkish forces and US allied YPG avoided full-scale clashed. Turkey's strategic objective was to prevent Afrin Canton from connecting with YPG Manbij and other Rojava regions. Accordingly, only a minor part of these operations casualties were from Turkey forces versus YPG forces. Topic demographic effect The Turkification of predominantly Kurdish areas in countries east and southeast were also bound in the early ideas and policies of the modern Turkish nationalism, going back to as early as 1918 the manifesto of Turkish nationalist Zia Gokalp, Turkification, Islamization and Modernization. The evolving young Turk conscience adopted a specific interpretation of progressism, a trend of though which emphasizes the human ability to make, improve and reshape human society, relying of science, technology and experimentation. This notion of social evolution was used to support and justify policies of population control, not unlike European colonialism. The paradigm of Kemalism rationalized the deportation and settlement program, reinforced with opinions of senior young Turks that in this country only the Turkish nation has the right to claim ethnic and racial rights. Nobody else has such a right. The Kurdish rebellions provided a comfortable pretext for Turkish Kemalists to implement such ideas, and in 1926 the settlement law was issued. It created a complex pattern of interaction between state of society, in which the regime favored its people in a distant geography, populated by locals marked as hostile in this regard, according to Professor. 
Caroline Elkins, the policy of governing a distant land to send settlers in order to reshape demographics there to resemble homeland is named settler colonialism. During the 1990s, a predominantly Kurdish dominated eastern and southeastern Turkey Kurdistan was depopulated due to the Turkey PKK conflict. Turkey depopulated and destroyed rural settlements on a large scale, resulting in massive resettlement of a rural Kurdish population in urban areas and leading to development and redesign of population settlement schemes across the countryside. According to Dr. Yost Jongerdan, Turkish settlement and resettlement policies during the 1990s period were influenced by two different forces the desire to expand administration to rural areas and an alternative view of urbanization, allegedly producing Turkishness. Topic. Human rights abuses Both Turkey and the PKK have committed numerous human rights abuses during the conflict. Former French ambassador to Turkey Eric Rouleau states, According to the Ministry of Justice, in addition to the 35,000 people killed in military campaigns, 17,500 were assassinated between 1984, when the conflict began, and 1998. An additional 1,000 people were reportedly assassinated in the first nine months of 1999. According to the Turkish press, the authors of these crimes, none of whom have been arrested, belong to groups of mercenaries working either directly or indirectly for the security agencies. Topic. Abuses by the Turkish side Since the 1970s, the European Court of Human Rights has condemned Turkey for the thousands of human rights abuses against Kurdish people. The judgments are related to systematic executions of Kurdish civilians, forced recruitments, torturing, forced displacements, thousands of destroyed villages, arbitrary arrests, murdered and disappeared Kurdish journalists. The latest judgments are from 2014. The Turkish government is held responsible by Turkish human rights organizations for 3,438 civilian deaths in the conflict between 1987 and 2000. In 1993, Mehmet Ogut, his pregnant wife, and seven children were burned to death by Turkish special forces soldiers. The Turkish authorities blamed the PKK and refused to investigate it. After 20 years, the investigations were started and they eventually came to an end in late 2014 with sentences of life imprisonment for three gendarme officers, a member of the special forces and nine soldiers. On the 26th of March 1994, the Turkish military planes F16s and a helicopter circled two villages and bombed them, killing 38 Kurdish civilians. The Turkish authorities blamed the PKK and took pictures of the dead children and spread in the press. The European Court of Human Rights condemned Turkey to pay 2, 3 million euros to the families of victims. The event is known as the Kuskaner Massacre. In 1995, Human Rights Watch reported that it was common practice for Turkish soldiers to kill Kurdish civilians and take pictures of their corpses with the weapons, they carried only for staging the events. Killed civilians were shown to press as PKK terrorists. In 1995, the European newspaper published in its front page pictures of Turkish soldiers who posed for camera with the decapitated heads of the Kurdish PKK fighters. Kurdish fighters were beheaded by Turkish Special Forces soldiers. In 1997, Amnesty International AI reported that, Disappearances and extrajudicial executions have emerged as new and disturbing patterns of human rights violations. By the Turkish state, in 2006 it was stated by the former ambassador Rouleau that the continuing human rights abuses of ethnic Kurds is one of the main obstacles to Turkish membership of the EU. In August 2015, Amnesty International reported that the Turkish government airstrikes killed eight residents and injured at least eight others, including a child, in a flagrantly unlawful attack on the village of Zergal, in the Kandil Mountains in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Human Rights Watch notes that, as Human Rights Watch has often reported and condemned, Turkish government forces have, during the conflict with the PKK, also committed serious violations of international human rights and humanitarian law, including torture, extrajudicial killings, and indiscriminate fire. We continue to demand that the Turkish government investigate and hold accountable those members of its security forces responsible for these violations. Nonetheless, under international law, the government abuses cannot under any circumstances be seen to justify or excuse those committed by Akhalin's PKK. 
The Kurdish Workers' Party PKK, a separatist group that espouses the use of violence for political ends, continues to wage guerrilla warfare in the southeast, frequently in violation of international humanitarian law, or the laws of war. Instead of attempting to capture, question and indict people suspected of illegal activity, Turkish security forces killed suspects in house raids, thus acting as investigator, judge, jury and executioner. Police routinely asserted that such deaths occurred in shootouts between police and terrorists. In many cases, eyewitnesses reported that no firing came from the attacked house or apartment. Reliable reports indicated that while the occupants of raided premises were shot and killed, no police were killed or wounded during the raids. This discrepancy suggests that the killings were summary, extrajudicial executions, in violation of international human rights and humanitarian law. Turkish Kurdish human rights activists in Germany accused Turkey of using chemical weapons against PKK. Hans Bowman, a German expert on photo forgeries investigated the authenticity of the photos and claimed that the photos were authentic. A forensics report released by the Hamburg University Hospital has backed the allegations. Claudia Roth from Germany's Green Party demanded an explanation from the Turkish government. The Turkish Foreign Ministry spokesman Selçuk Unal commented on the issue. He said that he did not need to emphasize that the accusations were groundless. He added that Turkey signed to the Chemical Weapons Convention in 1997, and Turkey did not possess chemical weapons. Turkey has been a signatory to the Convention on the Prohibition of the Development, Production, Stockpiling and Use of Chemical Weapons and on their Destruction since 1997, and has passed all inspections required by such convention. In response to the activities of the PKK, the Turkish government placed southeastern Anatolia, where citizens of Kurdish descent are in the majority, under military rule. The Turkish army and the Kurdish village guards loyal to it have abused Kurdish civilians, resulting in mass migrations to cities. The government claimed that the displacement policy aimed to remove the shelter and support of the local population and consequently, the population of cities such as Diyarbakir and Sizer more than doubled. However martial law and military rule was lifted in the last provinces in 2002. Topic. Abuses by the PKK. The PKK was responsible for a number of civilian deaths, even though this number is lower than those perpetrated by the government. The number of total civilian deaths perpetrated by the PKK between 1989 and 1999 was determined as 1,205 by the independent Uppsala one-sided violence dataset. This violence targeted members of the families of village guards. In the Pinarchik massacre of 1987, claimed by the PKK in its publication Sarowebin, 30 villagers were killed. PKK attacks on civilians persisted until the organization realized that these were damaging their international prestige. In 1993, Human Rights Watch stated the following about the tactics of the PKK when it was Marxist-Leninist organization PKK changed its ideology in 2001. Consequently, all economic, political, military, security institutions, formations and nationalist organizations—and those who serve in them—have become targets. PKK has attacked Turkish authorities outside of Kurdish areas. The PKK is against Turkish political parties, cultural and educational institutions, legislative and representative bodies, and all local collaborators and agents working for the Republic of Turkey. Many who died were unarmed civilians, caught in the middle between the PKK and security forces, targeted for attacks by both sides. In the early 1990s, the PKK executed bakers that delivered bread to army bases, burnt down and killed the owners of fuel stations that served the authorities in the areas they were active in. They forbid the distribution of Turkish newspapers and the watching of Turkish television channels, forcing the inhabitants to remove their antennae. The inhabitants were banned from joining any Turkish political party and were forced to get the approval of the PKK if they were to run for local offices. The PKK attacked schools as they were seen as emblems of Turkish imperialism that belonged to the colonial assimilation system. 47 teachers were killed in 1993 alone. A justification for the killing of teachers was that they taught Turkish to Kurdish children. According to Amnesty International reports in 1997, the PKK has tortured and killed Kurdish peasants and its own members that were against them in the 1980s. 
Dozens of Kurdish civilians have been abducted and killed because they were suspected of being collaborators or informers. According to a 1996 report by Amnesty International, in January 1996 the Turkish government announced that the PKK had massacred 11 men near the remote village of Guklakonik. Seven of the victims were members of the local village guard forces. See also Solution process Iraqi Kurdish conflict Iranian Kurdish conflict Timeline of the Kurdish-Turkish conflict List of Turkish armed forces operations in northern Iraq Turkish involvement in the Syrian civil war Turkey-ISIL conflict Maoist insurgency in Turkey List of modern conflicts in the Middle East Topic. Notes Carrot note the Turkey PKK conflict is also known as the Kurdish conflict, the Kurdish question, the Kurdish insurgency, the Kurdish rebellion, the Kurdish Turkish conflict, or PKK terrorism, as well as the latest Kurdish uprising or as a civil war. Carrot note according to official figures, in the period during and after the coup, military agencies collected files on over 2 million people, 650,000 of which were detained, 230,000 of which were put on trial under martial law. Prosecutors demanded the death penalty against over 7,000 of them, of which 517 were sentenced to death and 50 were actually hanged. Some 400,000 people were denied passports and 30,000 lost their jobs after the new regime classified them as dangerous. 14,000 people were stripped of their Turkish citizenship and 30,000 fled the country as asylum seekers after the coup. Aside from the 50 people that were hanged, some 366 people died under suspicious circumstances classified as accidents at the time, 171 were tortured to death in prison, 43 were claimed to have committed suicide in prison and 16 were shot for attempting to escape. Carrot note a recent article published in Applied Research in Quality of Life by Meet Faradin of University of Greenwich investigates the impact of education and poverty on terrorism in Turkey using econometric techniques. References <laughs>